Now, many of you were like me, and you either have not heard of the IWI Galil Ace, or if you have, you know little about it. And that was me just a few years ago. A group of us were sitting around talking about, you know, what if we only had one gun, end of the world, apocalypse, SHTF, you know, what would you have? And one of the guys said, hands down, I would take a Galil Ace. And I'm like, you know, Galil, I kind of knew what it was. Um, anyway, now it's one of my favorites, if not my absolute favorite gun. Let me show you why. Check this out. Nice. Ooh. There we go. Got it. Okay, so the Galil was created in the 1960s and produced by Israel Military Industries, or IMI, but now it's called Israel Weapon Industries, or IWI. It was based off the AK-47 and created to be as reliable as the AK, but as accurate as the AR. So what they were intending to do was essentially do the, you know, the ultimate combine an AR with an AK. Question is... Did they do it? The history's cool. I'm not going to go into that, but look it up if you're not familiar with it. It's worth your time. Bottom line, it left service because not of performance, but cost and weight. Also because there's the, the never-ending debate, AK versus AR. What if we could successfully combine the two? Money. So what I want to do here is just quick test the iron sights. Oh, before I forget, a couple features that this has that the, the other one didn't. It does have last round hold open, and then we've got a release here. Okay, that is really nice. It's not ambidextrous, but we do have the ambidextrous mag release, and it uses all the typical AR mags. Now, once I get this sighted in with the iron sights, to uh, 62 grain. I'm not gonna mess a whole lot with those. I'll, I'll just give them a quick test at 100 and 200 on the steel. What I really wanna do is see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this with a, you know, eight, what is it, 8.3 inch barrel. I've got an optic here from Athlon Optics, a one to eight by 24. I'm really excited to try this out, see what kind of accuracy we can get with a bunch of different ammo and then at range. Oh, another thing, this has no recoil. Zero recoil, we'll do a slow-mo here. Anyway, let's get the iron sights and check it out. Okay, so I got the iron sights, you know, pretty much on. That wasn't the greatest group. We're using the, the Tula. I just want to stop here because I want to put this on to really test the accuracy. So let's get this on, get it zeroed, and then see what we can do. Okay, just doing the initial sight in with the Athlon. The red here, that's 75 grain. And it, it really wasn't very consistent. I mean, I had that group of three, but that's two different rounds, and it went from here 
to there. So I switched over to the Tula 62 grain and did one five shot group. And that's actually more consistent with what I was getting with the iron sights. What I wanna do now is go through some different ammo, maybe some federal range, um, some Hornady 55 grain match and 75 grain match and see what we get for groups with that. Tested a whole bunch of different ammo here. We showed you the the Tula. Uh, weren't having so much with that. Went with Federal 55 grain, full metal jacket, basically just range ammo. We shot 15 in here, and this is kind of where I was getting after the barrel warmed up, and that's a pretty decent group. Then I switched over to the Hornady 55 grain match Frontier Boat Tail Hollow Point. There's 10 rounds. And that's a pretty acceptable group. Then I've got the Hornady Frontier 75 grain hollow point boat tail match. And now that's spread out. Then we've got the Hornady 75 match ammo. And that's really not a lot better and it costs a lot more. Then we've got the IMI 69 grain Sierra match king. And that didn't turn out a whole lot better either. And then I went with the PPU, the 75 green hollow point match. And that actually did a pretty respectable group. When it's all said and done, it seems to like the 55 grain. Now, when you look at this, if you saw my video on the SIG Rattler with a five and a half inch barrel for the 5.56, five, we got almost the exact same result. So... Much to my surprise, I thought 75 grain would do a lot better out of the shorter barrel. It didn't. Um, at least those two guns, and especially this one, seem to go with a 55, which is great because both of these are relatively cheap. Okay, so there's the groups with all the different ammo. What I did now was I disassembled it. I took the dust cover off, put it back on, and I want to see how our zero keeps. We're going to go back to the federal range ammo, the 55 grain, and then the Hornady Frontier Match 55 and see how that does. Real quick, a note on this dust cover, it is tight. It is not going to be a quick, easy field strip. It is difficult to get off and difficult to get back on. When you're putting it back on, push this down and it'll just catch on the side and then you pull the bolt back and it pops it up and out. Otherwise, it takes some serious elbow grease unlike most AKs. Okay, so we just shot a group after taking the dust cover off. What I want to do is I want to check the Warren one-piece scope mount here. We're going to take this off, make note of where we're at. This is the quick detach. Hopefully we keep a decent zero of that. Okay, we were right there right before that bolt. Now we'll put it back on exactly as it was. And we'll try again. Okay, so here was the original, the Federal Range ammo, the 55 grain, full metal jacket. Took the dust cover off and put it back on. Pretty similar. Then I took the scope off using the quick detach mount. As you can see, the groups pretty much stayed consistent, except that really tightened up. You get the first few, and that was like the last, I'm not kidding, that was the last four rounds. This barrel likes to run hot, okay? And it does seem as if the groups are progressively shrinking as we break this barrel in. Now, when we had the Hornady 55 grain Frontier, okay? Then we took the dust cover off and put it back on almost same kind of group. Then I took the scope off with the quick detach and put it back on. And again, we're just progressively getting smaller groups. Really happy. Okay, so it's looking really good thus far. So, so, so on the groups, but remember, we're using an eight inch barrel here and it's still breaking in. There's a better way to break it in it's steel banging time. My favorite time.
Nice. Hey guys, hey guys, if you like this review, if you follow my channel and you want to keep the reviews coming, YouTube is pretty much demonetizing almost everything related to firearms. What supports Beyond Seclusion is using my links to shop. Shop is if you always do it, costs you absolutely nothing. You go to Amazon, you go to PSA, Primary Arms, any of these, if you simply go in through my links and get what you are normally going to get, that supports Beyond Seclusion. I got a link down here that shows you how to do that quick and easy. Guys, I couldn't do it without your support. Thank you. Nice! Ooh. There we go. Got it. Okay, so that was the first review that I did on the Galil Ace 5.56. Five, as time went on, it just grew on me more and more as if it wasn't already completely and totally impressive. I wanted to do a follow-up video based on that conversation that started it all, that actually got me to get a Galil Ace in my hands. What if I could only have one gun... Here's some parts from that. Probably majority of the people, it comes down to like accuracy, stopping power, distance. So for a lot of folks, it's going to be AK or AR-15. You know, some of the others, again, you, you could make an argument. But what if we could take the AK and the AR and combine them so that we have the accuracy and distance of the AR but the reliability of the AK. So this is how I ended up with my IWI Galil Ace 556. Okay, small, compact. It is essentially in my opinion the world's best AK platform it is a ak-47 on steroids except this one is chambered for the 556 charging handles on the other side it's got all the bells and whistles of the ar as far as last round hold open okay bolt release we've got ambidextrous mag release on both sides it accepts all ar mags we've got a safety on both sides and then as far as the breakdown it's the AK dust cover comes off it's got zero return okay it's super tight so I can take this off and I have in another video take it off clean it put it back on and I'm still on zero this thing is a beast the iron sights on this are essentially AR-15 iron sights on an AK-47 which means we have the accuracy and when I tested this, I get incredible accuracy. Nice! Far superior than I did or could out of my AK-47. Now, here's the thing why I like this because 
in the United States, the most popular high power, high velocity rifle round, in my opinion, is the 223.556. We can find that almost anywhere. One could argue that this in the 762 by 39 would be a better choice, but not in the States. Maybe if we were in Europe or somewhere overseas, then that would be the most readily available ammo. But here, 556, I think is, is going to be the choice for a lot of people. Now, the other thing that I really like about this with the AK platform is this thing eats up and spits out any ammo any ammo that we can find. So if I come upon steel case cheap ammo, which also means I can play and practice and have fun with it, and I don't have to worry about, you know, um, like some of my higher end AR-15s that don't like steel, this thing shoots anything and it shoots them well. My preferred optics on this, we could go iron sights because they are outstanding iron sights, is I went with Sig's Romeo 8. This is a true battle sight. This thing is tough as nails. Excellent. Quick target acquisition. Super long battery life. And then I put the Sig Juliet magnifier on here because I can reach out at distance. And with the Romeo 8 and the magnifier, I don't get any blurring or separation of the red dot. So I very easily and effectively can reach out three, 400 yards. If I'm in closer, I just simply pop it out of the way. This does add, this does add some weight and some bulk, but again, I'm talking the apocalypse. Now, another big selling point with this Galil Ace in the 5.56 is it's KISS, okay? Because it's AK, but it also has zero recoil. This thing has no recoil. So smaller person, woman, young adult, child, anybody can shoot this and there is no recoil. Now the next one, stopping power. This one might get some controversy, the 5.56. Five, five, um, you know, for me, it still, it still works for me, okay? Stopping power, no, it's not a 308. Uh, it's not the big bullet like the 762 by 39, but I don't think there's going to be too many people that, that can argue that it's not viable. It may not be the top contender for stopping power, but it's certainly not at the bottom. Now, this won't apply for a lot of folks, but we can put a can on this. And I tell you, a can on this with the reliability and the mechanisms of an AK-47, but yet having the suppression because of the fouling that often happens with suppressed guns, I really like this one, really like it. Now, as far as I'm concerned with the Galil Ace 5.56, there's only two downsides to this, in my opinion. One is cost. This is not an entry level gun. It's not on the cheap side. MSRP is usually around sixteen hundred, um, and you know the good thing is, is even with everything that's going on, they're still pretty readily available because of the cost factor. And then the last one is weight. Okay, out of I mean, this is up there with my shotgun. This is not a light gun. That's one of the reason reasons the Israelis switched to the M4. Actually, it was both of those reasons. It was cost and weight. The M4 is is a lot cheaper and it's a lot lighter. But you still cannot beat this for durability. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the apocalypse, SHTF. And we put all that together, I think I've got a pretty good argument as to why this is the one gun to own.